Hey guys, so today we're going to talk about angles. So first, uh, before we talk about angle relationships, let's just review um, all the different types of angles. So first we have a right angle. These are angles that are 90 degrees. Um, think of like the corner of a room, you know, as long as it's constructed appropriately. Um, these are all going to be 90 degrees. So a square, a, a rectangle, these all have 90 degrees for each of their corners. Uh, next on the bottom, we have an acute angle. These are going to be, I think of like a cute little angle. So these are smaller than 90 degrees. Then we go up to obtuse angles. These are any angles that are larger than a right angle, but they're going to be smaller than a straight line. So it could be 179.9999999 degrees, or it could be 90.000001. But it can't be exactly 90 or exactly 180. It has to be in between. So those are obtuse. And then lastly, we have a straight angle, which is basically just a straight line. Um, but these measure 180. So now that we talked about what one angle is, we're going to talk about what angle relationships are. So angle relationships are always going to be multiple angles that we're dealing with. Let me just scoot this down a little bit. So multiple angles and um let's start off with adjacent so adjacent angles are going to be two angles that are next to each other so they have to share a vertex they also have to share one of their sides or a ray so if you look at the example they are touching each other again the keyword to that is next to they have to have a, a common side up to the top we have vertical angles these are two angles that are across from each other and these would be when we have intersecting lines. So if we have intersecting lines, that they're going to create four angles. And the angles that are directly across from each other are going to be vertical. And also, they are congruent. Always congruent. So again, congruent, for um, anybody who forgot what congruent means, that just means that they are the same, uh, the same size and shape. Okay, so they're equal to each other. Uh, down to the bottom, we have complementary angles. So complementary angles are going to be two angles that add up to 90 degrees. Now, this example are two non-adjacent angles. So they're not touching each other. There's two angles that are, um, you know, on the two different parts of the paper. But if you added them together, they would equal 90 degrees. So over to the next one, we have supplementary angles. These are two angles that add up to 180. So again, these are uh, two. This is an example of non-adjacent, so they are not touching each other. But if you add them together, they do still equal 180. Now, a linear pair. This is a special type of supplementary angle. Uh, supplementary angles that are also adjacent. So. For today, the two examples that we're going to do later, uh, we are doing a linear pair just because it's easier when we're finding a missing angle um, to solve it and figure it out by using um, the idea of a linear pair being um, 180 degrees. So again, those are adjacent and supplementary if they are a linear pair. They form a straight line, which is right in the title, linear. So now we're going to do a little bit of practice. So while we are on the practice pages, um, feel free to rewind the video and um, look back, take notes. Um, if you printed the Google Slides, you can obviously use that, uh, use that for yourself. Um, but additionally, if you're using the Google Slides, make sure that you guys are not going ahead and try to, to actually practice, okay? So you can pause the video if you're doing it right with the video and just writing notes down. But for this slide, what you guys are gonna do is we have six different problems, and we're going to name these as vertical, supplementary, complementary, or adjacent. Now, one thing to notice is supplementary and complementary angles can be adjacent, but what I want you to think of, if you could label them adjacent, so the angles are next to each other, I want you to figure out, could they also be complementary or supplementary? Because I'd, I'd rather you label them as that. Okay, it's more specific. So let's start with number one. So again, if you're going to try these on your own, you can just pause the video. 
you know, write down number one, two, uh, three, four, five, and six. If you want to get real, uh, real artsy with this, you can draw these if you uh, didn't have a printer to print out the Google Slides. So the first one we have is number one. So A and B, again, pause the video if you want to try it on your own. So A and B are across from each other, which means they are vertical. So these are two intersecting lines. If we are talking about the angles that are directly across from each other, those are called vertical. On to number two. So number two, you could definitely name these as adjacent. But if we go even further, we can see that angle A and angle B while they are adjacent, they actually are also supplementary. Okay, some of you might be thinking, ooh, couldn't we call this a linear pair? Absolutely you could. They do make a straight line and they are adjacent, so they are supplementary and adjacent, which means that they are a linear pair. So you could say that. On to number three. This looks very similar to number one. It's just turned, but angles A and B are across from each other, so they are in fact vertical angles. On to number four, the big giveaway is that little box. That little red box, that signifies that this is 90 degrees. They are adjacent, but since they do create a 90 degree angle when you put them together, we're gonna name them complementary. It's a little more specific, so I wanna call them complementary. On to number five. If you notice, there's this little line right here, okay? So they are naming this the 90 degree, but if you think about it, a straight line equals 180. So if this is 90 degrees, this side also has to be 90 degrees. So these are complementary angles. And then number six, that A and B do not create a straight line, nor do they have the little red box signifying that they are 90 degree angles. So these are just adjacent. So now we're going to move on to some practice problems that require us to find the unknown angle. So first we're going to do some examples with complementary angle pairs. So for question number one, we want to find the unknown angle KLN. So again, complementary means that the angles add up to 90 degrees. So if you look at our question mark, which of course we would prefer it to be a variable, but that's okay. So we have KLN Remember, when we're naming angles, we're going from one point to the vertex to another point, okay? Now, these are a point on a line, so, of course, these could be extended, but we just have these points. So, if angle NLM is 49, that means together they need to add up to 90. So, what I did to solve these is I created an equation. So, X, which I'm calling my question mark, X plus 49 must equal 90. So if I solve that, I'm going to subtract 49 from both sides. So X must equal 41, which means that angle KLN is 41 degrees. Now we're going to use that same procedure, but we're going to figure out what X and the angle and the missing angle are for number two. Now again, this looks a lot more complicated, but both of the angles add up to 90. So that's exactly what we're going to do, and then we're going to solve it using our acronym Don't Call Me After Midnight. Okay? So let's walk through this. So we have X plus 59 plus 3X equals 90. Again, those are just the two angles. I added them up, and then we set it equal to 90 because of that little box right there, right? That means the 90 degrees. So in our acronym, so D, we don't have to distribute because there's no parentheses. So let's move on to M, which is. Um, or don't call, C, which is combine like terms. So first I'm going to combine my like terms. I see I have an X and a 3X, so let's put those together to make 4X plus 58 equals 90. I only have variables on one side, so I don't need to move them. So now I'm going to add or subtract my constants. I subtracted 58, so 4X equals 32. And my last step is going to be to divide 4 from both sides. So X is 8. So since X is one of my missing angles, we'll put a degree sign on that. So one of our angles is going to be 8. And then the next one, I'm going to just substitute 8 in for this X. So we have 3 times 8 is 24, plus 58, which gives us 82. 
So my angles measure 8 degrees and 82 degrees, which if you did a check, 8 and 82 does equal 90. So let's use the same procedures to do supplementary angles. The only difference with supplementary angles is that these are going to add up to 180. So let's use the same thing, the same idea, but set it equal to 180. So for number three, we want to find the unknown angle JGH. That's a tongue twister. So FG, FGJ is 125 degrees. So what I did was, again, I made that question mark into an X, add them together, and set them equal to 180. The only thing I need to do is move over my 125, so I subtracted 125 from both sides, and I have 55 left over. So angle JGH is 55 degrees. For number four, I'm going to find the value of W, and then I'm going to find the missing angle. Now, we already know one of the angles is 120. I'm sure you guys are doing the math in your head and figuring out what the missing angle is. But again, this is all about figuring out how we would write this as an equation and showing our work that way. Okay, We always want to justify how we got our answer. So I know that if I add 120 and 2W, it should equal 180. So again, I'm going to subtract 120 from both sides, which leaves me with 2W equals 60. Then I'm going to divide 2 by both sides, and W equals 30. Now that's not the missing angle, that's just the variable. If I look at the angle, my angle is 2W, which means that my missing angle would be 60 degrees. So 2 times W is 60 degrees. Okay, so the last set of examples that we're going to do are vertical angles. Now, one thing that we talked about with vertical angles that's important is that vertical angles are congruent. So every time you draw intersecting lines, you are always going to create four angles. The two that are across from each other are going to be equal. So we want to find the unknown angles one and two. They told us that angles three that angle 3 is 140 degrees and angle 4 is 40 degrees. So if you look, angle 3 is across from angle 1. So if angle 3 is 140, that means that angle 1 must also be 140 degrees. Similarly, angle 2 is across from angle 4. So if angle 4 is 40, that means that angle 2 must also be 40. Another fun fact, if you guys were to think of this as connecting all of your angles, this creates a circle. Well, if you did add 140, 40, 140, and another 40, that actually equals to 360, which we know is the um, angle of a circle. So a circle goes around in a 360, right? Think about if you spin around, that would be a doing a 360, right? So let's do the same thing but find the value of y for number six. So I know that the missing angle is 52 degrees. I don't wanna know the missing angle, I wanna know what y is. So vertical angles are equal, which means I'm going to take these two angles and I'm going to set them equal to each other. So three y plus 25 must equal 52. So I'm gonna solve that by subtracting 25 and then dividing by three, so y equals nine. So I know that was a lot. I've also at, included two additional videos to help you understand angle relationships. They're not super long. Um, they have really great graphics and the explanations are very to the point. Um, and I think they'll, they'll be very helpful for extra practice for anybody who is still a little bit unsure. Okay, so make sure that you go through this video and definitely look, take a look at these videos. Um, so you're ready for the assessment later on in the week. So thanks, guys, for taking the time to look through this, and hopefully you practice. And um, I definitely appreciate you guys, all your guys' hard work. I will see you next time.